Good evening and ahoy, this is the news. Kim Kardashian was named one of GQ's 2023 Men of the Year, which is ridiculous. They clearly meant Chloe. Obvious choice. She looks like a man. Yeah. Horrendous. A serial wedding crasher who stole cash and gift cards for five different weddings in three different states, prolific, was arrested and put in jail. So I guess not just the grooms lost their freedom that day. Oh! See? It's a, good it's a 50s wedding joke. It's a good marriage joke. It's like a ball and chain. It's, yeah. like, it's Flintstones. It's a good honey mooners. Like just, it's a good Henny it. Youngman. You don't get it. Bad Bobby, <laughs> a.k.a. Cash Me Outside Girl, has revealed that she has made over $50 million on OnlyFans. <sighs> ah, isn't that great? While the whatever I do what I want girl from Maury Povich has accumulated dozens of dollars to put whatever comes through a hole in a gas station wall into her mouth. Welcome to Normal World. <laughs> I'm Dave Landau. I'm Court Blake Garrett, just uh, questioning my life choices. Yeah. And of course, with us, we have Angela. Hi. Also questioning my life choices. Yeah. Yes. And joining us today, please welcome Kevin Sullivan. Okay. I'm pretending like, I, like we haven't met earlier. And for, like it's all fresh. For, for, and uh, Frank Easterling. Frank. Did I pronounce that right? You did, and oh, I'm also good. questioning your life choices. I my yeah. life choices are terrible, sir. Yeah. I they're all right. We're not role models here. You no, know, it's good that we got here because we don't have to do much, and we can pretend like it took hard work. Yeah, you know, it's it's podcast or radio. It's TV. We don't know what it is. Yeah, really. They, they, we just come into the room and talk, and then they uh, do something with it. They gave us a TV show, and it's this confusing thing. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you be the guest. <laughs> you be the judge. <laughs> Hey, but yeah. next week, Thanksgiving weekend, right? We're not going to be here because we're going to be with our families eating turkey and stuff. So uh, just just so you know, and that's a, that's a real depiction of us in the future. We sent back in time <laughs> so you could know what's going to happen next week when we're not going to be making shows. We're going to be slaughtering what is going to be known as the new natives. Yes. <laughs> which could be aliens. Robots. Uh, you don't know. <laughs> Mexicans were in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> They've taken over. Just not the legal one. Yeah. Though, you know what I'm saying. They've infiltrated. Anything that can get away with that joke. And where can we find your guy's show? Right now we're on Compound Media. There you go. Uh, that's the number one place to find us. But every now and then we release, we tease the audience with uh, freebies over on YouTube. Oh, you just have to put nice. 21 Gun Podcast into your computer and you will see it pop up. You're a big I, tease. I was that's Anthony's it. co-host for many years and wow. I love him. Yes, he's a great man. And, he's uh, great. Yeah, yeah. He's a good dude. He gave us a home, and we are enjoying it a lot. And it gave him home, finally, because he was just outside on my front lawn for a while. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Yeah, he, it's kind of like the whole, like, blindside story. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're adopted. Less, less, less football -y, but My I, wife looks like Sandra Bullock, so. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's getting well, short for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> She's a tiny gal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. It's getting weird. I know. It is. Uh, well, yeah, good for you guys, and thank you. They actually took us shooting today. Yeah, it was, gonna have it was a lot of future. fun. I, I, uh, I haven't gone a lot, done a lot of shooting. Garrett really nailed it. Yeah, bro. And it turns out I was all right when the guns got bigger. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Started off small in a twenty two, was wasn't so good, but then when you got to the saw. That the machine gun, what was that called? Saw, M249 saw, squad automatic weapon. Yeah. Okay. I've never seen anything like that outside of a movie where you're like, that's a fake <laughs> movie gun, right? Yeah. Like it, it, That shoots phasers, right? Do we have a clip of today? A little bit? A teaser? You rocked that that saw there at the end. It was great. Yeah, you were great with the handgun, though, and they were great with everything. Yeah. Well, he, <laughs> again, military guys. Full disclosure, I was an Air Force officer, which basically means this is what I did. Set a nice comfy chair. He was the uh, the, the actual... The chair force. <laughs> the chair force, yeah. Right. He knew how to shoot. I, I still call it like that That saw. I would just call it a machine gun. I'm kind of like same level as you guys. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I like, saw that on a movie yeah, That's a big poo-poo guy. So <laughs> we just kept referring, you and I were referring it to as movie guns. We're like, yeah, that's Everything. like a Rambo gun yeah. and a dirty hairy gun. <laughs> yep. Or like that one John Wick would use. Even yeah. the uh, lethal weapon gun, which everyone hated. 
Yeah. Yep, that's the I answer. went into it being like super stoked. I, I've never shot a Beretta. Well, always wanted to because it's like the <laughs> weapon gun. It's the diehard yeah. gun. It was in uh, uh, Max Payne. And I was show like, Beretta. That's the game, right? Uh, I didn't even know. I didn't watch that show. I didn't even know it was, didn't a, even know it was a thing. You didn't even know that he killed his I wife. I blank faced when you said that joke. And I was like, I, I don't know what you're, you're talking You were like, I've no, I was not aware that he never. murdered his wife. But Robert Blake did. Yeah. With a Beretta. Oh, he with was the, Beretta, not, but was it with a Beretta? I'm not sure because... Sure he's out on that one. Well, he was Beretta, so it was with a Beretta. Because I'm starting he to go, is, Was he like... Like I'm in a mirror now. It's karate, just back and forth. Yeah. Karate master. I think he, as I recall, he said he left his gun in the restaurant, which is always a good thing where <laughs> you're like, yeah, it's the same caliber that killed his wife. But he's like, but you couldn't have been mine. That's right. <laughs> Mine's at table six. I left it in the day. <laughs> it's, it's stuffed behind the toilet. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> Make eye contact, but still. <laughs> yeah, Robert Blake, it was, uh, he had a, well, he had a pretty okay, he was a little rascal. which Origi I feel, Like an original little yeah. rascal. Which is why I feel like he should have got some time off. If you've ever read about the Little Rascals, they were like the most rough. abused people <laughs> yeah, in Hollywood. Rough. I thought that's just what the judge said when he sent, sentenced him. You little like, rascal. <laughs> yeah, you rep scallion. <laughs> <laughs> You're in time out, son. Yes. She is clearly cool. dead. <laughs> what was it? And then the other guy, uh, Phil Spector. Oh, the wall a, of sound. Oh, it's all Dude, crazy yeah. eyes. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was prolific, a legend. And a crazy person. Made some of the greatest music ever. Of all Absolutely. time. Yeah. And you can't convince anybody that they shot themselves while smiling. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it was through the teeth. And oh, he's God. like, she did it. And they're like, really? It's the first form of suicide where anyone's Smiled. ever done that. <laughs> like, done it through teeth. And we have witnesses to show that you've done this exact same thing before. You put a gun in people's mouths. Well, according to the Ramones, it definitely got them to do the songs they didn't want to do. He's like, yeah, you don't want to yeah. do this Christmas song? They're like, <laughs> actually, we do. Yeah. <laughs> like that's really like the gun uh, and Phil Spector really did get a lot of music out of a lot of people. It's for our benefit. In yeah. retrospect, we really should have known with the hair. Oh, wait, like, yeah. should, that's a red flag. It's a lot of wigs. Yeah, it's a yeah. red flag. It was, I think it was more the waving the gun around every time he walked in the studio. <laughs> that's it. The wigs didn't help. <laughs> the wigs just meant it was closer to it going awry. <laughs> like Bozo the Clown. Or it was the do it or I'll murder you. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, <we're> like, <laughs> is he being serious? It's a lot of red flags. Just don't smile. <laughs> They're like, we don't really know. We're like, he hasn't killed anybody yet, but he doesn't have a gun pointed at you. And all of a sudden, you just have Joey Ramone who's just <laughs> singing a Christmas carol. <laughs> now, what were you? You were in the uh, Marines, correct? I was in the Marines first, then the Army. Okay. I did so, both. Okay. Yeah. And then what, what was your branch, if you don't mind me? Your, or not branch, uh, your position. So I started uh, the Marines. It was a combat engineer. So I did landmines and all that other fun stuff. And then, oh, holy crap! After that, then I was a recruiter, which I sucked and I hated every moment of it. And then I was a combat engineer again. And then I was EOD. So wow, I blew so things up. You that defused, blew up for a living. Defused bombs and stuff. I I was told you love the Hurt Locker. This is what I heard as well. It's a documentary. It's America's favorite documentary about EOD. Yeah. I don't know why you get so upset, Frank. Yes. He asked me not to do this. We had a long conversation yeah, about I, I, wrestling in our, in our underwear. I understand that the... You guys do that a lot. The movie written by uh, a woman who's never been near a war and starring Jer <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Jeremy yeah. Renner is a national treasure. Yeah. And at that point, had only really been in Clueless. So uh, you're saying that this was not spot on? Uh, not even close. It's a training video, wow. Frank. Not even just a hater. You're just a hater. <laughs> <laughs> Watch him kill you in the middle of the <laughs> We did a whole segment on the show with uh, Anthony, and it, we just showed clips of it, and we were saying- The okay, whole see. show. And we're like, now see, this is, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to pull the wire of all the bombs, and he's oh. just sitting there. Pull them all out. Yeah, I feel like if I was writing a script, I would go, in this scene, what we shouldn't do is have them just randomly pull all the wires- <laughs> Yeah, all the good but it looks so cool. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to piss somebody off in the EOD field, because it's a small community, yeah, like, within a small community. So, if you want, depending how it goes, it gets smaller. I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, well, make it stumpier. Yeah. Look at it this way: if <laughs> if you go, if there's a bomb and I'm down there and I'm working on it and it blows up, I won't know. Right. Yeah. It's immediately somebody else's problem. Really? Not it's mine. that. Okay. Yeah. So I so if I make a mistake, then it's literally my last mistake to know. Yeah, you just your wake up in the clouds probably, and you're like, "Hey, your brain probably doesn't register it quick no. enough." Nope. When you train, 
so do you, I assume you train with with obviously fake bombs, that yeah. sort of thing. Did you ever miss during a training a few times? Oh yeah, and it's actually done on purpose. So, and I know it sounds counterintuitive, like well, you don't want to die. No, they kill you in practice over and over and over again, so you learn to not make mistakes. Oh, that makes sense. Yep. Do they wait? They kill you on, like on purpose? Yeah, they make the problems like a thousand times harder oh. than it should be. Like, and it's stuff that's improbable. Like, oh, this one has a mercury switch, a pressure switch, uh, it's a time delay, um, and if the sun goes down on a Tuesday, it's going to blow up no matter what. So, like, uh, they make it purposely for you to die. One, it gets rid of your nerves. Two, you learn, like, a lot more from it. Kobayashi Maru. Wow. Thank <laughs> you for your service, seriously. <laughs> what's the craziest, if we're allowed to ask, I don't know what's top secret or anything, but, what, like, what is the craziest bomb you've seen in the field? In the field? Field, the craziest one I've seen um, is actually it's actually the weakest one I've ever seen. Not the one that blew me up, but the one you got uh, blown up uh, eight times. Go <laughs> in, on. in training, no, in real life, yes. Were you, you wearing have all your fingers and toes? So you were protected by the Jeremy Renner spacesuit. <laughs> <laughs> so you, I was in a ve- well, I was in a ve- I was in the vehicle. So the the okay. bombs hit the the truck that I was in. Gotcha. Okay. But uh, the craziest one I've seen because and this is how crazy these guys are. They took regular bombs or grenades, and they put tar all over them, and they stuck them to the sides of the barriers on the road. Okay. So when the sun hit it, it would just melt the tar. And then it would eventually, they would tell you had it timed. They knew how long it would take. And it would just fall off when we were riding by and it would blow up wow. as we were driving by. Holy crap. Yeah. They're not as dumb as you like, right. people think they are. They're ingenious as all hell. Well, yeah. If they were if they were as dumb as like they are portrayed, we wiped the floor with them. Yeah. But we're still fighting them exactly. to this day. Oh, and depending, and they're also willing to give up their lives for their cause. And I mean, I imagine that's a terrifying thing when you're, not that, as a soldier, you're not, but I mean, there's, I guess, the difference between the kamikaze fighter, the suicide yeah. bomber, you know, yeah. th- there's yeah. that It's difference. easier to fight a system that they want to kill you in a systematic way, a conventional, but you're literally fighting an ideology, mm-hmm. which is almost impossible to win against. Yeah. Wow. That is, what is, have you ever, I don't know how to ask this, but have you ever <laughs> been like, in a way, been like, ha, I told you so. I'm in the field where you're like, don't go do that to like a newbie. And then he did. And you're like, well, <laughs> like all of a sudden uh, his foot lands behind you. And you're like, see, see, well, Joe, not, 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 not really what I mean. Not seriously, but like, so yeah, but, but you it get was people at, that are too cocky is honestly the question. Yeah. But it was at my expense. So the first time I got blown up, we were uh, doing a patrol and we're in the trucks. I was in the lead truck and he says, oh, we're going to turn here. We're going to go down there. And I'm like, let's not go down there. And they're like, no, no, I was like, no, let's, let's not do that. Like, I got a bad feeling. We don't need to be down there. Let's not go down there. They're like, no, no, we're going. All right, fine. So we're going down, going down. And I look and there's a, a dirt bridge above me. And I look down, I see a little dark patch. And I said, what the hell is, boom, blew up on the side of my truck. So it's like in my brain, I'm like, I told you we shouldn't have come down. Here. Right. And now I just got hit by a 250 pound IED to the side of my truck. Oh. And yeah. Wow. What? So, Kevin, what was the toughest piece of paperwork you had to find? <laughs> Did you ever have, like, a, a special hem- suit? That like I a hemorrhoid one? Really, yeah. really mean paper clip. Yeah. It's paper clips, man. It was very tough. Medic! <laughs> yeah, you're like... <laughs> like Saving Private Ryan. I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, you just... <laughs> You walk into a grave of a bunch of soldiers that died, but you're like, I didn't really meet them. <laughs> Some vets get upset at like uh, Fourth of July. I get upset at the ticker tape parade. <laughs> like it's triggering, see. man. <laughs> oh, this paper, man. <laughs> I had to do some stuff, though. I imagine out. In the- yeah, yeah, actually like, pretty what, damn cool. Like, yeah, I would imagine he's, pretty, he's underplaying yeah. it. Most people do. Yeah, I, I I flew. Well, I was the navigator on C-130s. Badass. So we did um, airdrops. Um, that's basically it. We <laughs> drop people, equipment, trucks. Uh, even, not in my case, but our C-130 could drop what was called the MOAB, the mother of all bombs out the back. 
So mm-hmm. kind of keep in line with your, your... What is the mother of all bombs? It's a big-ass bomb. It is, a, it's well, literally the biggest... size of a dump truck. How many times would they do that? Would they drop one of those? How many times so have like, they done it? Or how many times will they do it? How many times have they? Is it like something they go to all the time? Or is it like, we no. reserve this? I feel like it's not a, all the timer. Well, yeah, so, yeah, that's like, not... That's, it, from what I understand is... Um, so like, uh, I think it was Tora Bora or someplace where they were fighting out of the, the caves, trying to draw them out. They figured instead of blowing them up directly, you drop one of these in the vicinity and it's so large and it, it almost looks like like nuke, like you get the mushroom cloud, right. but it burns up all the oxygen, sucks all the oxygen Ooh. out of the caves, so you suffocate. It's the, it's the largest non-nuclear munition that we have in that that we still use. And to give you a, a bit of scale, it would be about from the edge of the stage there to about there, wow. and about as tall as a VW bug, and it's all filled with nothing but TNT. Wow, and now... Most of this where this occurred, like where you guys are experiencing, is, is this mainly Middle East, I would assume? Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those days. Or that or whoever pisses us off, to be completely honest. Because right. it's, it can be deployed anywhere, and it's literally dropped. And it's it's a dumb smart bomb, and then it's dropped. and It's just got a parachute on the back. Yeah, gravity yeah. does its thing, but it has some capability to kind of turn. Okay. And yeah. Guide itself down, but it's pretty much, I want to kill everything there. Yeah. It's uh, nickname was the Daisy Cutter. Yeah. Oh, I've heard of it, that. Yeah, okay. they could put it in a, a forest or whatever, and suddenly it's no longer a forest. <laughs> Big flag. And, it, and the, the thing is, it doesn't ever hit the ground. It's yeah, an it, air burst. It's air burst. Yeah. 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 Oh, so everything's just a fallout onto... Well, yeah. And yeah, like I said, it's so one Which is thing, worse, right? Yeah. It does more damage when it blows up in the air. Because it can spread. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That, and like you said, it takes off all the oxygen, because one thing a fire needs is oxygen. So when that explosion hits... Sucks it all up. It's all gone. Yep. So anything within that area is wow. gone. Where were you uh, raised where you decided to go into the military? <laughs> I don't know if that, I guess that's not maybe not a tie-in, but what kind of brought you into that um, direction? So my dad was Army, and that didn't really... So I didn't really have any, like, draw family-wise to it. It was just I was a knucklehead not doing crap to <laughs> Twenty three years old, and I was like, I do something. Right. So I joined the Marines, and when they, I picked my job, I didn't like any of them. But he says, but I was like, well, what is this one? He goes, oh, you get to blow stuff up. I said, I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that's literally. It's like it's not a super cool story. Like it, that's it. I was like, I'll do that. That's kind of a cool story. Yeah. I got to be honest. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I want to blow stuff up. That sounds good. No, it's cool. What about you? Uh, probably Heaven. family and movies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was, I grew up during the Top Gun and I was like, I want to fly. Yeah. Never did that, but kind of close, you know, got it and got probably my way. You and I were kicking back today and just throwing out movie references. Yeah, to it's like, gun. it's my, my life. <laughs> we've interviewed, um, gosh, I, I wouldn't even know now. I guess if we've done a hundred over on compound and maybe 250 before we went to compound. So 350 different interviews with different veterans. And I would say the, the most common is family. Yep. So yes. their dad, their uncle, mm-hmm. their, their whatever. And then every now and then you just have some psychopath that wants to go to foreign countries, meet foreign people and, and kill them. And kill them. Yep. Yeah. My, my dad was uh, Vietnam okay. and vet and agent orange and all that, but he still wanted me to go into the military because I was such a fuck up for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I honestly was going to go in and it was a few days before nine 11. And I was like, nah, and my friend, Joined the Marines, and I, and then that happened, and I was like, yeah, was like good luck, Merrick. <laughs> like, I joined, and I, I felt bad, but I, I, you know, it's like that was like right, right before when I decided not not to go in. I'd be dead now because I'm a pussy. I don't think I would have helped America <laughs> at all. Yeah, uh, I joined several weeks before nine eleven, so my whole thing was. You know, I didn't like my job. I just finished college. And I'm like, let's just go around and see the world. Right. And then I came home, was drinking coffee. I was just home from um, some sort of training. And then sure enough, watched 9-11 happen. I was like, oh, it's all well. going to change now. But the weird thing is, and, and uh, again, just from interviewing so many veterans uh, previously on our show, you'll find that, and, and I don't know if this is something ingrained or something that's just trained into people, but... Uh, most of the veterans get really upset at the idea that they're not going to go to war. Yep. So like a lot of these guys, like when you see something like that happen, it's the first thought is, I hope I get to go. You know, I hope I don't get stuck somewhere else. Right. Mm-hmm. And it, it, and the ones who don't go, 
a lot of them have some mental health issues because their friends went over and served and went into some survivor's guilt. Yeah. Yeah. You see a lot of that. I can tell you why that is because I know when we went, like like one time in particular, we went and we had a bunch of new guys come in behind us and we were coming back and they thought we were going to be on a little rotation and we weren't and they were pissed off. But the reason guys want to go so bad is because you actually get to do the job you're trained to do. There's that, and then there's no, you don't have to deal with all the, the crap that you have to deal with here. Mm-hmm. Bills, wife or girlfriend, uh, traffic, like whatever, like you keep, you deal with every day, you don't have to deal with it over there. You literally have one job, and that's the job you were trained to do for however long, and now you get to actually do it. Yeah. And there's probably not a lot of like BS bu- bu- uh, bureaucracy. In the sense of, I mean, I'm sure there is. But no, there is. Is there still lot. there? I'm sure, there's a lot of politics seems, too, and like relationships. Yeah. People it would seem like the, the pecking order, though, of your own unit would be. You would think, and it starts. It always starts out good, and everything is great until you start winning. Okay. So there's actually a story really? where, okay. yeah, there's actually a story where um, they sent the Marine unit <laughs> to. Um, I don't think I don't know if it was Haiti or wherever they sent them, and somewhere sexy. Yeah, they thought the Marines were executing people because they kept finding the the guys with headshots just getting domed in the head so they thought the marines were like catching catching people and shooting them in the head just locals by. yeah that's what they thought yeah come to find out the marines were just that damn good and they were just doming people oh. in the head yeah so then it says well we gotta put some rules of engagement in place because you guys are like too good at killing people it's war oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. They did it to us too. Like we have, we've got 50 cows on our vehicles and they're like, well, we need a less lethal round. That doesn't exist. That's the point. Of- There's no such thing as a less lethal round. A round is a round and it's going to kill you if, it, if you shoot it at a person. So they were like, um, go with the 240s, which is a smaller machine gun. Uh, go with the saw. That's an even smaller machine gun. Well, you purely because of the the optics of what it yeah. looks like to have a fifty cal, and you're blowing people away. Yeah, you're, but these you look people too are good. But these people are putting five hundred pound bombs in the ground. Right. Yeah. You want me to look oh. less threatening when they're trying to blow me off, literally off the face of the earth. Wow. This brings up a good point, though, because you have people like AOC, Pelosi, um, Schumer that are starting wars and they're rattling their sabers to go to war. And these are the same people that have never been to war. They've never seen what yep. a bombing run does to a village or, you know, what a, a rifle round will do. And they're the ones that are setting the rules. They're the ones saying they'll get their reports and say, oh, oh, the Marines did that. Uh, we can't let that happen. It's bad optics. And then they they destroy the whole Unit morale and, yep. and the- what is your feeling on uh, drone strikes? Because we were talking about this yesterday with the detachment of really everything in our Western culture of control yep. to the point where in war we're now sending drones, which is like it has a guy that's hundreds of miles away, Vegas, blasting people yeah. away. The, guy, the guys that do that, they're in Vegas. And that brought up a really, we had a whole discussion with a buddy of mine because he was thinking that these guys need combat action badges and decorations. Mm. And I agreed to a point, but I said the amount of therapy these guys and girls are going to have to have because there's an attachment. Mm-hmm. You're like driving a drone, you're looking at a screen, it's like drop that bomb here. But then the moment you find out, right. you just park that warhead on some like about on that guy's forehead right. from thousands of miles away. You're detached from it. Like or a wedding party. Or a wedding. Or someone driving. Yeah. Right. Obama. I I, yep. That's a whole different screw job of the mind that I don't think I'm prepared to deal with. Like, yeah. at least I can see you to shoot you because you're shooting at me. And I'm okay with that. Mutual combat, I won. Right. I got you, shit to do tomorrow. You obviously didn't want to have things to do tomorrow, so I did what I had to do. Yeah. I'm in Vegas, so that means, like, I do this and then I just go on a lunch break? Yeah, yeah there's lots or something. Is there a part of that though where like, okay, we go into Nam, you're dealing with uh Via Kong, or you go in yeah. like we said, kamikaze fighters, or you're dealing with certain people who like they play by different rules. Like yeah. other countries torture people, you know. Uh, yeah. So I mean, if we're if we're able to protect our citizens or, or at least our military, is it good to have those it, I mean, and I'm not saying that I'm not defending it. I'm just right. wondering 
Because sitting in Vegas is weird. Like, I feel like you should yeah. be somewhere near or something. Yeah. I don't know. Something just seems odd yeah. if you are just, like, you're just sitting yeah. at Caesars. And, you know, like, you're just playing a slot, and you're like, and also, and goodbye. Dead. Yes. <laughs> you know. I don't know. you got to think of it. So I, I wrestle with this all the time, because all the videos coming out of those um, low-tech drones dropping yeah. grenades on people out in, in yeah. uh, the Ukraine right now. And uh, I don't know. You want your army to... Uh, overwhelm with uh, uh, excessive force, I don't know, with overwhelming force to take out another country. You want them to say, it's a bad idea to mess with these people. And if you're droning a car, truck, or whatever, and that saves American lives, and then that's what you want to do. But in the same sense, you then look at, you had mentioned Obama, what he was doing. He droned more people than, than we know. And where does that go? Autonomous drones? Are autonomous drones going to be flying around here and right. then taking people out? Because, I don't know, they're associated with the wrong type of speech. The wrong, I mean, I, I'm going down a dystopian future, but yeah. still, you yeah. have to draw the line somewhere. Or just so. the future. Yeah, <laughs> or just next week. Well, what do you yeah. do when <laughs> we're not the only ones that are doing it? You have two different forces that are droning each other. Well, just wait. I mean, don't we? Right, yeah. Or Russia, we're going to start. That's seeing what we're seeing. Like yeah. That. yeah, we lose integrity, though, don't we? <sighs> yeah, in a way. <laughs> I mean, a long time ago. as odd as it sounds. But I mean, if you have people, I mean, you have World War II vets and you watch a lot of those interviews where they just see America now. Mm -hmm. and it's these older people crying and a lot of the responses like, oh, whatever, this old man who doesn't know. And it's like, but he fought for a country that he believed in and the freedoms of that country. And he's watching it being taken away. And like, he believed in a certain kind of combat and fairness. And, yep. and I guess you can't rely on that, I guess, on your enemy. But should America be held to a higher standard or does it would that actually end in our defeat i think so um america has this idea and and again i don't know what they're doing like in the top secret world but they have this idea that we have all these like really really high-tech things that can kill somebody you know without them hearing it from five miles away we were flying into baghdad in 1964 model hercules so these are the same planes that we used in vietnam mm. and we were doing airdrops using grease pens and I, I shit you not um slide rulers uh and and basically looking at the ground looking at smoke and dropping things on target so th what you're talking about is like one maybe a 0.5 percent of okay. what we have gotcha. uh, in fact most of our guided munitions and everything i heard of have, have been used up in yeah. So we have to do everything the dumb way, the old way, and that's just using a slide ruler, calculating your 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 drop. So yep. I don't think it's that. I, I think we're still in kind of an old way of fighting. You know, you still need the guys on the ground. Yeah. Uh, you it's still need like they they've just now uh, as of recently revamped uh, one of the most loved planes in the military, uh, which is the A ten Warhawk. They just recently redid it. And if you don't know what an A-10 Warhawk is, it's probably the sexiest plane you'll ever hear about. I've seen it because of Anthony. Can, we, not, can not, we ask Jeeves this? No, it's not the sexiest to fly. And it's on the ground. It's rickety. It's a rickety piece of crap. But when what it's you the You're air, talking about the, the A-10. Right. Yeah, the A-10. They're the greatest planes ever made. Yeah. It's a tank. It's literally, someone Warhawk, said, yeah. take this GAU-8 machine gun that, you, that shoots munitions the size of Red Bull cans. And put wings on it. Wings Make on it fly. It, yeah. Right, yeah. And that's literally all it is. And it's a tank killer. And like guys on the ground love it because it goes burnt and it mm -hmm. kills anything on the ground in front of them. Very low tech though. Very low tech. And you just. So those things are still mostly being used. Yeah. They, they've they've, tried, to, they've yeah. tried to, to mothball them several times over and all the old guys are like, no. Still reliable. Yeah. It's, sorry. What's the name? A-10 Warhawk? Yeah, I just want to make sure for yep. Jeeves. Yeah, the, the actual name, I believe, is the A-10 Thunderbolt 2, but everyone calls it a Warthog. Yeah. Sorry. What movie was that? Was Air Force that Top Gun? Boy, wait for a second. Let me tell you about <laughs> something else that is the best thing. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. Sorry to interrupt, guys, but it's pretty know. good. <laughs> I just want to let you know, it's called Undertack. Oh, man. And these are some great, great underwear. I don't know if you're familiar, but... You guys wear undies? Are you going cowboy? Yeah. <sighs> going commando. I mean... I was in Chad bad, Prather's chair yesterday you know? with nothing on from the bottom down, I told him. See, so, you should, uh, you should well, correct fair. that. Yeah. You should correct that and get some undertack. All right. I'm telling you, these undertack, these underwears, they're the best. They're I'm so... You. I'm you wearing know them right now. sometimes when you're peeing and there's a little leftovers, but you don't have time for all that dribble. shaking. This one's got a nice, good pad in there, so, you know, it'll hold in the moisture, but it'll also mm -hmm. wick it off so you can go about your day yeah. without leaving the pee spots in the front of your pants so you feel comfortable in khakis. Antibacterial as well. 
Yeah, so it doesn't even matter. If you can do whatever you want in them, and it's not going to... I mean, I wouldn't, but... But you could. The option's there. But under tech, it's a great underwear. I'm wearing them right now. Not even kidding. Mm, They're my favorite underwear. You can wear them to bed because they feel like, oh, what are these? Also pajamas? They f- they feel silky. I don't you know do. what the, the the cotton is. Just it's not amazing. cotton. It's something else. It's like uh, Moldal or some other like, space age freaking material. It's ridiculous. It's I not have, of like, this eight pairs of them now. <laughs> I want nothing more than to wear these right now. You guys I'm telling you, you me. will seriously like them, and you can get them yourself if you go to undertech.com and get twenty percent off site wide. And you can use an offer code normal twenty. I think they should even talk to you guys about they sponsorship. Should. Not telling you guys what to do under tech. <laughs> These gentlemen are the kind of people that you want to talk to because I, I think, think they're going to appreciate your fine, fine product. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm telling you that right now. I sleep well in them. I love the feel of them, and I think they're magic. So again, go to undertech.com. Offer code normal twenty. Look at those. Look at them. Look at that. Coming through I don't know. colors. It's the penis part is odd. I don't know who's going <laughs> to look like that. If if somebody that Mine's feels bigger than like that. a cone head. I went to order them the the extra large because I'm extra large fella, and yeah. they're sold out in black. Really? Yeah, because they're I, so great. They sent me black. I got I have one pair of black. Oh, but I ordered a bunch of other uh, the the green and the gray because that's all they had. I had to sew. They're so good. To sew a medium and an extra large together. <laughs> <laughs> the extra large is for the ass. You have uh, three legs on it. <laughs> but yeah, go to there. You're going to love them, honestly. It's, it's, and also, a percentage of the proceeds go to, again, human trafficking. Mm-hmm. And that is stopping it. Stopping it. Yeah. It's not helping with it. It's stopping human trafficking. So that's an important thing. We're not... We don't like that. It's not aiding and embedding trafficking. Anti... It's anti that. Yeah. Good. Good. So just so you know, when you wear them, you're not like... You're not no. pro that. You're yeah, anti, you're, you're anti like, that. Yeah. You're like, I'm not down with all that business. <laughs> well, while you're doing that and you're thinking all those thoughts, oh, man, these, these underwear are so nice. I had a friend who had a pair of underwear where his it, it separated his balls from his... That's a competitor. We don't talk about them. I won't talk about them. It doesn't sound good. Why would you want that? That's yeah. really? like a weird pocket thing. Yeah, you this put doesn't your have balls a in a pocket and that. then a place yeah. for the elephant trunk. I don't care yeah. for that. No. Because now all of a sudden, no. This Weird. Is, it's a mystery. No, yeah. I don't need separation of church and state. No, I don't. No. 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 Not in your pants. Yeah. I don't need that. I've never needed it anyway. I don't mind if my... It says a similar... It has a pocket, but it's not... It's. I don't it's mind if my pocket. moral compass is all in one pouch. It's more like a little pouch that opens up. It's like you, It's like a little uh, kangaroo pouch for your pee-pee. Can well, you this, show us now? This one... You know, I'd rather not. Yeah. This one... I, I don't want to intimidate. This one... I <laughs> don't intimidate anybody. <laughs> <laughs> this one will prevent the stickage, though. Oh, and you legit? I mean, yeah. You think about when you're out. You're about to defuse a bomb. You're nervous. Oh yeah. So you got your ball sticking to your legs. Yes. Not, Imagine if you didn't. No. Now, now Swamp you're ten percent more confident. <laughs> <laughs> had you had under tack, you would have only been blown up six times. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I find that amazing that you were blown up eight times. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just it's incredible to me. Wow. Well, two of them I don't think count because they were like grenades. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that that doesn't count at all. Doesn't I just count. feel that the fact that you uh, <laughs> what the fact that you don't look like don't uh, count like your grenades <laughs> don't count. It doesn't. Sorry, like Dave. Sorry. Five pounds. It doesn't really count. Okay. I think they tough, bro. Yeah, I, I, I if someone was in a truck designed to deflect it, so I was good. Yeah. I feel like if somebody throws a grenade at anything I'm in, I'm going to count it. I'm <laughs> counting that shit. <laughs> I'm gonna go, yeah, I got blown up. A guy threw a grenade at yeah. me. I think if you've... If, you, if I've been in the vicinity of a grenade going off, I've been blown up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it was intense. If you don't look I like... was in a bunker, but man. If you don't look like a piece of cheese left on a hot Arizona dashboard and you can tell the tale, <laughs> yeah, that makes you... Like, you're, like look at you, you're fine. And my therapist would disagree. With me. Well, no, mine, <laughs> mine would too. But that's <laughs> that's internal damage. But that's how they get you to keep going. They're like, you're not fixed yet. I still need your copay. And you're like, are you sure? I'm feeling better. And they're like, nah. You remember? Well, Ooh. the funny thing is, after I got blown up, they were more concerned with the truck than me. <laughs> of course. Like, <laughs> like was, dust it off. You'll be fine. Walk that off. And they're like, son. I was like, yeah, just as good. And they're like, is the truck okay? And I'm like, I'm fine too. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> like we didn't say you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got all your limbs and fingers and stuff. Yeah. They take you to do this stupid test when you're done, like after you get blown up. And the doctor, I don't know if he was an idiot or he was just in a rush, but he's like, So do you feel okay? And I'm like, No. He's like, Yeah, but you're all right, though, right? And I'm like, No. 
It's like I feel like someone punched the entire right side of my body and I can't breathe out of my nostril on the right side. It's like I got like a bad sinus infection mm. on the right side of my body. He goes, okay, well, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Okay, what time is it? And he's standing in front of a clock. So I'm like, 0 to 30? Yeah. It's good job. I'll uh, have a couple days and uh, get back out there. Thanks. That's the worst doctor I've Man. ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine going to any doctor's office and having that happen. You're like, uh, I don't know what's going on, but I just can't feel anything from the waist down. He's like, but you're talking, right? <laughs> I'm assuming he also has seen a lot of shit being a military doctor. So he's I would like, imagine yeah, so. But... Relatively, you're okay. Well, it sucks to be a medic, but I don't think the advice is call me <laughs> in fine. three days. <laughs> Get back out there. Yeah, There's so many stories like his, though. I mean, it's it's yeah. super, super common. And then he has to go to the VA and Fucking convince VA. them. Yeah, and be like, and they'll say, well, well, it didn't it didn't say oh, exactly yeah. what you're telling me. I'm in the just file. now getting my, uh, my, <laughs> my PTSD is just now getting added to my disability. Oh, it's so wow. nice of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nice yeah. when they run out of excuses and then like, finally have like you. Literally, like two days ago, I've, I finally got it. Oh, well, just here's, they, they wrote your paperwork up wrong. Here's what you have to write. And then we'll add it. My nice. dad, my dad was in uh, the Navy, <laughs> and he he got uh, diabetes in the Navy, so he was discharged on medical uh, discharge. And we had to deal with the VA. It's my, terrible. My entire life, right? that place is horrible. I don't go. I just would rather go to my own. Why doctor. would you? Yeah. If I can make you happy for one more time, yeah. my dad was a Vietnam vet. Yeah. I had my disability claim before he did. Of course you did. Wow. Wow. Not no, shocked. I, well, that's what. Wait, we never got ours. That never. They, and then they said my mom filled out the paperwork wrong the third time. And it was like, she lost her mind because my dad, you know, wow. and they're like, well, you guys are 18 now. Oh. You're like, oh, that's like, cool. Well, but he's been sick for years from, the, you know, remember how you threw gas or you threw a chemical into a field yeah. to kill yeah. everything? <laughs> and you were like, but it's fine for you guys. Sure, it'll destroy plant life in a matter of seconds, yeah. but you can breathe it. Yeah. You know, and that's same thing your dad went through. And, yeah. it, it, you know, people are just getting paid for mustard gas. Yes. Insane. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. From, you know, you're talking about World War II. So it's like, we're sorry about that. Here's the $38.48 yeah. we should have paid your great grandfather. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. You know, it's it's tragic. Like it, the way that it. The way that they treat soldiers in this country is is seriously complete and utter bullshit. It's I disgusting. Pay, I pay no less than four to five thousand dollars of my own medical care because they won't do it, and I have a doctor that will. Uh, my daughter, oh. random thing earlier this year, um, <laughs> she got sick. I don't know if it was COVID, it was something. Yeah, she's nine years old. Uh, woke up, can't hear, Dad. My ears blocked up. I thought, okay, it's a cold, you know, never came back. So she went through the whole process. Um, TRICARE, who was the, the uh, military retiree insurance right. company, they said, sorry, we're not paying for that. I'm like, so wait a minute, my nine-year-old daughter who needs a hearing aid, you won't pay for it. No. However, if I decide that I'm a girl, they will give, or if she decides that she's a boy, they will pay for cross-sex hormones, and they'll pay for um, any surgery. surgery or things like that. That pisses me off. Given like, listen, it's good news. She thinks her ear is a penis. Can you go ahead and send <laughs> exactly. us a hearing aid? And they're like, hey, it's right on its way, so we apologize yeah, for the yeah. holdup. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it blows my mind. Uh, but, I mean, what do you expect? In fact, we just did a bit on our show uh, a couple weeks ago where the military has paid, I think it was $5 million in the last few years on um, transing soldiers taking soldiers and putting them on cross-sex hormones and doing the surgery and stuff like that. But little girl can't mm -hmm. hear. Sorry. Screw them. That's disgusting. Wow. Yeah. On every level. Yep. Like, and that's what you're there for and to protect your children. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's yeah. what it is. I, I signed my name on a line that I, if I died or whatever happened to me, take care of my kids, take yes. care of my wife. Um, but no, they won't do that. And we contacted our, um, you know, senators, we contacted our representative and same story from each one. We'll look into that. That's wow. That's amazing. And then when we say, Hey, by the way, they'll do the cross sex hormones. They say, Oof, I'm not touching this. Sorry. And it, it, it's this guy, you know, and it sucks is when you talk to people at the VA who are military, they tell you on the phone, they're like, I honestly apologize. I'm trying. Yeah. I yeah. really want to work with you. I'm really sorry for what happened, you know, and they're doing what they can, but it all just comes down to somebody who's this higher up who has no experience. It's like they find someone with no empathy and no relatability to any of that. And for some reason, that's who it goes through. And then you watch 
billions of dollars worth of money tanks, whatever, go all to, you know, all these other countries to assist in aid. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, I'm at home. I serve the country. My daughter needs a hearing aid. And they're like, nah, yeah. <laughs> nope. not worth it. Do you have a son that needs a vagina? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, no. Well, sorry. You're on your own. <laughs> Can't help it. This stuff pisses me off so much. But it's like why, for the, the it, people that, that put their life on the line, literally, to die for our country, they're the ones that get completely pushed aside once you get out. And you look at Gavin Newsom. You got blown up eight times, dude. <laughs> eight times. And they're like, ah, whatever. It's literally, we'll on my it's literally on my paperwork. It says PTSD due to IED, not service connected. <laughs> Are you serious? What Pro does I it guess. not service connected? I swear, that's what it says. Are you serious? Yes. How? Where did they think you got PTSD? Yeah. I'd say it was from at least one of the eight helped. One of them. Maybe one. <laughs> one. At least. Throw me a bone here, They're doc. like, it, it definitely wasn't from these grenades. They're only five pounds. <laughs> if you're in a... <laughs> you were in a truck, you're fine. If you're in a Humvee that blows up and the first thing you hear is, how's the truck? <laughs> Your brain's never going to be the same. And I'm not... I, I, I have PTSD from accidents. Yeah, it's like from car accidents, like the fact that you like, and I think that for like me, that's way less severe because I don't have the experience what you have, like in the, in the stuff that you've probably seen. We and call that, we call that comparative uh, trauma. And now I'm starting yeah. to sound like a foo-foo, but it's, it's a true thing. So, and we run into this too in the military is that folks will sit there and say, you know, like, oh, he's been blown up eight times. So what? what's mine? You know, I got yeah. shot or I didn't. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't deserve it. I'm going to keep it to myself. And then they, they bury it. Um, this, a friend of mine, a Marine actually explained this to me once because um, I was going through some some things and I was like, yeah, but you know what? My, my shit has nothing, like it's not even comparable to yours. And he said, well, take the, I don't know, 55 year old woman standing w in line with you at the grocery store. Her dog could have died last year. And to her, that is the worst thing that ever happened to her. Mm -hmm. And that'll affect her as much as the guy who had to scrape his friend up off the, the concrete or get into accidents or be blown up eight times. So yeah. we see that a lot and, and yeah. And my, had a really bad splinter one time. If that was Does the that worst count? thing that happened to you, Jared, thank you for your service. Okay. That's my <laughs> My hangnail is rough. <laughs> Imagine sitting there and like, sitting just comes back a guy who just <laughs> got blown up by a bomb and you're like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's hell on earth. Yeah. Keeping me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> just tingles every time. I can't, I can't get more than five hours of sleep to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> Does he still have a pulse? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... I I just think it's, it's, and I think you're right about that. Mine comes from military because of what I saw happen and, and, you know, with my, my dad, not that it's even yeah. you know, a comparable thing, but to mm -hmm. watch that happen and seeing soldiers, the ones that have real valor that are out there in LA, I remember Skid Row and people that are actually, these real people who it's like, you've been now shoved aside and ignored because it's easier to save money. That's why every politician that gets on his high horse about mental health care, it's like, you're full of shit. Yeah. yeah. You're, you don't actually mean anything that you're you saying. Could, it's almost like they're ashamed. No, it, it is. And you could solve the whole health care and mental health situation if you took and made the politicians have the same care or the same, they had to go through the same thing that vets did, they'd fix it in a heartbeat. Because they don't want to deal with what we have to deal with. So if you force them to go through the VA or go through TRICARE, they'd fix it in a week. Yeah. Same as the economy. If you guys lost your jobs and you weren't allowed to get any money from any of the, you know, the bureaucrats and any of the lobbyists, and we're, you're not allowed to get paid until you guys figure out this budget, yep. that's even what Ward Buffett said. He goes, I bet you in 24 hours we would have a budget and we have a fixed economy. Yep. But they've never had to face repercussions. No. And no one can explain to me how Nancy Pelosi's uh, salary is one hundred twenty eight thousand dollars a year, but she's worth over one hundred twenty million dollars. Why is any politician worth that? Exactly. exactly. If you're a public servant, and Pelosi's in the news today. What was the story, Angela? Um, it's hammer guy, related. <laughs> I just wanted to see this because we wanted to touch on this at least once. Well, we always touch on <laughs> yeah. it. So we like we like to like bring Paul, up Paul Pelosi. Like Paul. Oh, the fact so, um, that he he hires gay men to hit him with a hammer and have sex with. <laughs> <laughs> so that very man, that very gentleman, um, yes. uh, he pled in court not guilty to two charges including uh attempted kidnap of a federal official mm. um he claims that he wasn't trying to hit paul pelosi with a hammer he was trying to get to nancy and he wanted to be wearing a 
unicorn costume, and she ruined his plans, and so he got wow. angry and hit him all below. <laughs> <laughs> was it him that tried to what? blame it on video games and, yes. and YouTube? Yes, he said he was living in a place that didn't have a shower or a bathroom and playing a lot of video games. Bro. He used to be a left-wing ideologist, he said, but um, a conspiracy theory uh, turned him into this. So. Now I believe yes. that uh, Paul Pelosi did pay him. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. Uni- are you serious about the unicorn? Yeah. Yes. Like that, he wanted that to be dressed a- in an inflatable uniform costume. He said unicorn. unicorn I mean, <laughs> unicorn uniform. I mean, couple goals, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, did what? you imagine the videos if he did make it into the costume? I kind of want to see it now. Well, no, yeah. like, hilarious. Wish it happened with a hammer. I, I'm not gonna say that I wish he, you know, had ended. I'm just glad. It, I wish it would have all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted him to get into the costume. That's in the costume. what I'm saying. But I just, like, what if he was in the costume when they got there? Yeah. yeah. And he's just like, what? He's like, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> I just, just enjoy he just costume. Hits Paul because he's five, angry. Five more minutes. <laughs> just give me five. five. Come on, guys. That's what and I Paul, said was hammer me in the ass. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's a misunderstanding. You hammer Not me. Hammer me. Oh, <laughs> you wires just, cut crossed. You cut. forgot the dildo? I got a hammer in the car. Yeah, hang on. I'll go get it. He goes, you can tape it to your head like a unicorn. <laughs> a sweet ball peen I picked up from Home Beeps. Mm. Did you say ball? Bring it in. Ball peen. <laughs> now listen, my wife's going to be home any minute. Stay dressed as the unicorn. <laughs> and after you murder her, we're going to fuck again. <laughs> Dude, she's the worst. That's the problem, though. She is Horrendous. her and everybody okay. like her. That's why we love making fun of Paul and the fact that he picks up gay unicorns to have sex with, and then they make up stories like that. <laughs> There's no way this wasn't brought into a lawyer, and he's like, "All right, here's what it was: not guilty. You wanted to be a unicorn, and you were there to hurt Nancy. Okay, don't say that you were there to dress like a unicorn and have sex with Paul, because <laughs> we all know." You were there to have sex with That's what you were there for. <laughs> that, was, that was literally what you were there for. Because the second she leaves, he just treats it like home alone, but a grown-up pervert, where he's just like, all right, I got to go cruising like El Pacino and just <laughs> picking him up on the streets. Is it the Godfather where the, the, the guy has the dead hooker on the bed? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How many times did Paul Pelosi's crying on the bed while his lawyer's calling Nancy? Oh, no. Yeah, he's just like, he's banging cocktail waiters. <laughs> Come clean this up for me, Nancy. Help me. <laughs> I, had sc- I did it again. I did it again. <laughs> this time the police were there because he answered the door like an idiot. He, w- <laughs> he wakes up. There's just a homeless guy with a unicorn mask <laughs> head in his bed. <laughs> God, what a worthless human being. <laughs> oh, these are the people that run our country. Yeah, but I'm with you. Like, There's no reason why any public servant should be making that kind of money. And even ridiculous. Close. Even close. Even the vet ones, use, they turn out to be basically just like pieces of shit charlatans. Like, yeah. they... Talk about an eye patch guy? Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Oh, Dan Crenshaw, yeah. 100%. It was, by the way, he went to, um, I don't know, whatever school he went to was funded by a George Soros mm. organization. Yeah, some BlackRock Saying, involved, more than likely. Might be. Yeah, I didn't like how they had uh, Pete Davidson apologize to him on SNL a while ago. That was oh. when it was like, was oh, that yeah. yeah, that's right. I'll, I'll admit, and I'll be the first, I'll, I'll admit that when it first happened, I was like, who the fuck's this Pete Davidson guy, piece of crap? Because yeah. but, but, I didn't know anything about Crenshaw at that time. Yeah. And then, like, as time went on, I was like, eh, maybe Pete was right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, how yeah. fragile. I don't know. I got some single, red flag laws. I don't know a single veteran that you couldn't go up to and use the darkest humor you could make yeah, fun of the yeah. fact that they have two amputated legs and they will laugh harder than you will i've i've done shows for the troops that's this you know what i've done and just talked to people and like done the the hospitals and va hospitals and that's where i discovered that marines have a and i'm known as a dark comic <laughs> and then they'll tell you a joke and you're like wow yeah, they're pretty dark. <laughs> like they are they have military has the darkest sense of humor and it's why i love the military because yeah. You just keep pushing to see if, and it's like, you can't offend anybody. It's oh. so fun. It's so fun to see how dark you can get. Yeah, it's and you're, a, you'll never. I mean, it starts it. with the skin first. And yeah. Then it, just, <laughs> it, goes it just takes from. Whenever he tells yeah. a joke, it's dark humor. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of, it's in my DNA. Um, what are you going to do? You can't help it. Yeah. Melanated. But I had a, a buddy of mine, he, uh, <laughs> we were out and I, I always forget that he lost his leg from like thigh, like down. And we were out at a restaurant, and the waitress kept like banging his leg. 
So, and he kept saying, don't worry, I didn't feel it. <laughs> she didn't understand. So she did it again. She's like, I'm, it's such an idiot. He goes, no, really. And he takes the leg off and shoves it in her face. like, I told you, I didn't feel it. <laughs> Shook his stumpy thing in her face. I got a friend that lost the bottom half of his leg, too, in the military. And he, yeah, he does the same thing. He just makes fun of it all the time. He's like peg-legged. I just had a friend Mark who lost. Mark the Cyborg. What's up, bro? Oh. I just had a friend that lost it to cookies. Oh, wow. And on that note, <laughs> sugar fruit. before we get to the final part of our show, we got to get out of here. We're running yeah. out of time, which sucks because you guys are really great to have on. We appreciate you so much. We can find you on Compound Media as well as 21guns.com. You can actually dot net. Dot net. It's 21gun.net. Dot net. Spell it out. You can use the numbers, whatever. I okay. bought both. So. Oh, cool. That's yeah. a good idea. That's what I did with uh, a prison tent, which is no longer available. So never mind that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Don't go there. But, uh, <laughs> you missed out. <laughs> uh, but you can catch me this weekend at the Comedy Cove in Springfield, New Jersey. That's uh, November 17th and 18th. Uh, and then at the Improv Tampa, Florida, November 24th and 25th. And Syracuse, New York, December 8th and 9th. Uh, on my spiraling downward tour. And you can find me right here tomorrow because we do a show on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. It's called Normal World. I don't know if you know about it. Nope. Uh, and Friday, Friday Night Tights, as always, and my personal channel where I play video games every once in a while. So Also, Check I heard there's going to be a special treat on Friday Night Tights. This oh, yeah. Week. A little, little oh. special Normal World. Oh, treat. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad that guild trip worked yesterday. I, I plug it every day. You just don't watch it. I, well, I watch it. I, I work on Fridays in the clubs. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Otherwise, I'd go on your show because I like your your show's fun. You're always invited. I know. You guys are the best. We love you. I love like like nine-tenths yeah. of you. <laughs> 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 no, I love your show. It's safe. You know that. Well, I think you agree. Mm -hmm. You know who we're talking about. Yeah, I get it. Now, welcome to The End of the World. Target released, of course they did, released a line of woke Christmas decor this year, including a black handicapped Santa. Oh, yeah, we have a photo of it. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not real. It's real. It's real. Black Santa in a wheelchair, baby. Oh, my. Every year gets worse and worse. <laughs> oh, I hadn't seen the picture. <laughs> Oh my lord! Why would you? Why? Why do you think this? Is, here, okay, we have, I gotta have one now. Well, yeah, we have. Okay, yeah, we, I'm going to buy one after. We have the two show. people here from the black community. You guys happy with that? I love it. I don't think I have a choice. Forty acres and a mule, or a black sand, or a black sand. Yeah, it's like it's little a Negro trade. on the shelf or something. It's like you can't take a peek at the oh gifts and stuff. Oh my god! I, oh, it's a sorry. I have to go buy one. That is, I want one more than anything right now. They did that. I can't. <laughs> to be, somebody in a boardroom said, <laughs> I got an idea. Yeah. I got an idea. Stay with me to the end. And 14 <laughs> people I'm afraid to me. get fired were like, no. yeah, 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 yeah. And then when they all walked out, the guy was like, see, I told you I could do it. <laughs> pay up, pay up. Come on. God. I thought Santa was magic. Couldn't he fix? <laughs> couldn't he fix paralysis? What's the backstory? There's got to be. Charles Xavier backstory. can't do it. He can't. That's true. Yeah, I think I think he was blown up four times. <laughs> <laughs> He's Not got enough it. Christmas spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I'm sorry. That is just. How do you? But why? Like, <laughs> but why? Move past you, it. Like, move past I can't. We're trying to it. represent all the people that I know. Walk we, I know we're running out of time. But <laughs> all right, kids, you know how Santa was. You know, handicapped. It's not even the black part. <laughs> it's, it's like I've seen Does black Santa have my a whole life. I'm from Detroit. It's the wheelchair. <laughs> it's un. Who's that? All right, whatever. All right, look. All right, you know what? So I'm just gonna ask. What is your best idea for a new woke Santa Garrett? Oh my goodness. Uh, minor attracted Santa. I like it. <laughs> Fitting. I like it. Yeah. Angela? Um, Down syndrome Santa. Oh, well. <laughs> He's fun. He's yeah. cool. He's energetic. You can't yeah. not picture it. No, you yeah. really can't. I see it in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, he can bring more presents down than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> spirits are up, the strength. syndrome is that's, down. It's that strength. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> uh, like the strength. Kevin, what do you got? <laughs> Handy, capable Santa. I like that. Oh. Just make it simple. There you go. <laughs> I like that. I saw it earlier. But yeah, actually, yes, your dreams are already come there. True. I I miss it. What? He's <laughs> <laughs> had a whole. <laughs> <laughs> Shelf of wheelchair bound black men. All <laughs> right, right. But well, that's true. Yeah, that's but true. other I guess she, or uh, uh, they have PTSD Santa. Oh, that's yeah, each, the, it's always the the uh, <laughs> handy capable yeah. that you can't see. So it could just be Santa with a look on his face, yeah, a uh, thousand yard stare. Yeah, it could could be pray to Mecca Santa. <laughs> what do you have, <laughs> <laughs> Frank? Limb different Santa. Oh, I like that. That's a nice way to say he doesn't have yeah. his pillow hand. person. Pillow person is another Dang way. Oh no. Oh. And so I'm, I'm going I didn't make it up. No, it's <laughs> oh, okay. I mean sorry. Kind of all you can do. <laughs> Pretty much you lose your arms and your legs. It's I hope you have a good speaking voice because you just have to talk about how good your life is or you're a pillow. Voice yeah. actor. <laughs> and <laughs> Paperweight. You, you can hold doors open. That one. Yeah, that's Sorry. true. No, I don't care. I don't think anybody's going to write letters because they can't. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Damn. I'm going to go with <laughs> regrets, gender reassignment, surgery oh, counselor no. clause. <laughs> and again, thank you uh, so much for joining thank us. We you. really appreciate you guys sharing your stories. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. We uh, are gaining subscribers. Please hit like. Please subscribe so we can Wait. bring you more great guests like this. Uh, check us out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 10, 9 central. We really do appreciate all of you. Have a great night. Bye-bye. <laughs>